turning down, keep that spirit up. The heathens already know their time is up. My treasure stored in heaven. Better clean your temple, go away to leaven. We keep them holy days, yeah, it's time to feast. We got our fringes on when we in the streets. Huh. This that truth, news. Had to switch my flow, yeah, I had to do it. Used to be a broke boy, now I'm getting to it. Most I fill my cup, now I'm thumbing through it. Yeah. Uh, now we up. Children of the tribes waking up. Ain't no turning down, keep that spirit up. The heathens already know they time is up. You say you with the movement, but this our nationality, we sticking to it. We them Israelites that the most high using. Why you think we putting all the scriptures in our music? You thinking, huh? To reach the lost sheep, see, get up off me. I'm already ten steps ahead. You can't cross me. Then you say you don't believe in Christ. That's when you lost me. Ain't no false doctrine. I no fake proof. Stop me. Now we up. Now we up. Children of the tribes waking up. We waking up. Ain't no turning down. Keep that spirit up. Keep that spirit up. Oh, already know they time is up. Yeah, they time is up. Look, I got a cannon and the devil on my head. Black sheep and outcasts in my circle, we all misfits. Check the aura, we on fire like menorahs. Warring with these demons, so I'm riding with the Torah. I'm gon' up it and bucket this race. Flies are dope, I'm up in the way. No talking to action, let's cut to the chase. Y'all with the trap, get trapped with the snakes. I had to choose, I drew the line. Walk where you step, y'all for the mind. Over for heathen, they out of time. We on the ride. Ain't no turning down on more, cause now we on it. Christ coming back, he coming. Strong, yeah. And if you wait with the most, I leave me long, yeah. You still follow religion, what you want, yeah. Uh, now we young, now we young, yeah. Children of the tribes waking up, waking up. Ain't no turning down, keep that spirit up. Keep that spirit Them heathens already know they time is up, yeah. They time is up. Here we go. Shabbat shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shit over there zoned out, man. Yeah. It was good, that good of a good of a read, huh? <laughs> Shabbat shalom, family on uh. Shabbat shalom, family on the live feed. Uh, peace, blessings, and light to you all. I want to give all praise and honor to the Most High. God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, our king, and our master, Yahushua Hamashiach, as we uh, come into another Shabbat study with the Kaab Maku Ministries under the house of Adiah. As y'all see the title, The True Inheritance of the Hebrew Man, Part 2. The, tr the True Inheritance of the Hebrew Man, Part 2. So, uh, before we get into it, um, as y'all remember last week, we really going to go into depth about uh, a Hebrew man supposed to understand his purpose and how he's supposed to function as one who's supposed to be in God's image on this earth. So we're going to continue in that. But before we get started, we will rise, face Jerusalem, and pray on in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Yo, God. Yo, God. Yo,
Abba, we come before your throne in the name by the blood of Yahushua, Masha Yah. Asking that you receive this prayer and then and that you receive this 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 uh song in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach of all the children of Israel and in representation of our forefathers who served you in righteousness and truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. description you're beyond compare hallelujah you're sovereign in all your ways and your ways are past finding out oh God. but somehow some way father by way of your word by way of your divine you have figured out a way where we could become a copy you wrapped your word in flesh 
And by way of the same thing that came to create us is the same thing that was used to redeem us. And bring us back into right standing with you. Oh, yeah, there is absolutely none like you. You are God and God alone. You are king and king alone. And we thank you. We thank you for giving us another day, another Shabbat, another sanctified, set apart day where we can cease from all our wants, all our desires, and even all our despair, and even all of our concerns, and we can become one with you by simply ceasing, by simply stopping, and breathing and taking in your word, the same thing that was blown into our nostrils when we became living souls, oh God. We thank you so much, Father. Uh, we thank you so much. We can, there's nothing we can offer you. There's nothing we can give you. There's no blood. There's no, there's no, no blood. There's no, not even a sacrificial element that we can give you. But the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts, oh God. Please let these things be acceptable in your sight, oh Father. Cleanse our minds and our purposes and our intentions towards you, Father. That when we do offer up sacrifices of praise, that it would be clean in your sight. It would be a sweet incense in your nose. It would not come up as stink or fire. Oh, my God. We thank you, oh God, for allowing us to have one more opportunity to sup with you. Told everybody. To be one with you by way of your word. Told everybody. So now, Father, as you prepare for your, the feast you have prepared for us through your servant, Mikael, let it be nutrition to our spirit, man. Let it be a sustenance, a great value to our souls, oh Father. And let every hearer of what comes out of his mouth be blessed thereby. For some, let it bring salvation for others let it bring edification and for others let it bring hope and for others let it bring planting and being rooted in you father hallelujah we know your word is multiplicity it can do all things and it can touch hearts no matter where it is all it needs to be spoken out and through is a clean vessel and, and we thank you for your servant more mikhail nasi for being a man after your own heart, being a man that is purposed to serve you in spirit and truth. And now, Father, let every heart and mind be subdued by your word and by your will as the messages go forth. In the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray. And it is so. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All praise. Hallelujah. All praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, Shabbat Shalom, everybody on the live feed. That was powerful for right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. So as we continue the feast, you know, we started the feast last Shabbat. Uh, we went to the definition of inheritance. We went to the biblical definition of inheritance. We went through, we went through pretty much the prelude of uh, showing how Yah had his portion and had his possession and who was his inheritance. And we established the, the foundation of this lesson to show that that same inheritance is the same inheritance that a man should have going through his own home and his own house, right? And so now we're gonna go through and we're gonna show how, now how the father who is in the image, the man, the Hebrew man is in the image and the likeness of the creator and how he must establish the same footsteps for his wife and for his children. And so we're going to start in the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter three, Ecclesiasticus chapter three. I'm about to share my screen real quick. All right. Share my screen. Somebody, can one of y'all go on the live feed? Let me know if uh, if y'all can see it before we get started. We're in Sirach chapter three, 
And it's a rock chapter three, verse nine. Anybody on live feed? Can y'all see my screen pulled up? For those who on the live feed, if you can give me a what they say, numbers, and give, give me a, give me a seven. If y'all can see my live, if y'all can see my lives. Okay, so we up. We good. All right. So the book of Sirach, chapter three, verse nine. Give me a cane once y'all get there. Okay. Now my screen portal. All right. Let me get that for now. It's one twenty eight, but we were we were here. So Sirach, let's go to Sirach chapter three, verse nine. Sirach chapter three, verse nine. Actually, let's uh let's start at verse eight. Okay. Mm. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter three, verse eight. Mm. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed. Right. So honor thy father and thy mother, both in word and in deed. We're in Sirach chapter three, verse nine or verse eight. So let's look at this from from a more broader view. Who is the father? The most high. Right. And we came from who? Who is our mother? Huh? Earth. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, but overall the earth. Okay. The earth is our mother. And so even the earth gives us distinct instructions on how to take care of her. You understand? But through the father. And so we apply those same principles in our own families. You know, I heard a great saying, if, if one knows how to handle and manage agriculture, he then will understand how to manage it in his family. He didn't understand how to manage his family because the same principles for a plant or a seed applies to how you raise your family. Okay. Everybody with that? So what we see here is how we apply the instructions of our father and our mother indeed and by word. We then obtain the inheritance on how our families should be designed to serve us as Hebrew men. Come on. That a blessing may come upon thee. That a what? A blessing may come upon thee. And we established that last time. Who was the blessing? Huh? A good portion. Who's a good portion for a man? What's a good portion? A good wife. A good wife. That's the blessings. A good wife is. Come on. From them. For the blessings of the father establishes the house of who, the children. Who established the house of the children? The father. The father, the father establishes the houses for the children. Read that again. For the blessings of the father establishes the houses of the children. Uh -huh. But the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. But the curse of the mother rooted out foundation. Weren't we rooted out of Jerusalem? Why? Because we could not follow our, our father's instructions. You can read in Lamentations. You can read it in the uh, book of Baruch. And you'll see even today that our mother, Jerusalem, she mourns for her children. But she's under the, 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 the ordinances of Yah. So she can't even bring her back under her own pot. Right? She has to stay in line also. And even her, because her children went off, she got put under desolation as well. So what, what do we find out here? That following, obviously following your father's instructions, brings the blessings but anything outside of that brings a curse even if that is like we talked about we have a we have an abundant of brothers who who come under uh the teachings of a single mother and we just talked about that before we went live what do most of these men produce as far as they like some of them become homosexual some of them is effeminate as elder said some of them is womanizers then some portion goes to jail because they try to find their daddy in the street. Right? And so that's the curse of the mother. And it's not blaming the woman, but when there's not an authoritative figure or a master to give instructions, there is no foundation. I saw a post a few weeks ago that uh, pissed a lot of women off. That said, without the father, there is no family. Now, if we talking about the nucleus of a family, 
There is no established family without the father. Because the family don't start until the father plants seed. Right? But the father, even if he's in the midst of the house, and he's not fulfilling his role as a father, it's, it's as if no man is in the house. Therefore, this is why we must go under righteous instruction as Hebrew men on how to establish our house. Because the point is, we got lives to take care of. Right? We got lives to shepherd over. And at the end of the day, these lives are the fathers. And he also said, you know, don't offend the little ones, right? Don't be a blind man leading the blind, right? And so this is why it's important for a man to understand his, his purpose in order by way of an authoritative figure who Yah has sent to show him what it is to truly establish an inheritance. We went over this before we went live. Going over it. If you know where you come from, you know where you're going. Right? So guess what? There's a there's a discontinuation where there's not a father before us establishing anything for us. And then his father did not establish anything. And his father before him didn't establish anything. And he, anything further than that is dealing with a slave. So the only thing that's been established continuously is a slave mindset. We don't know what it is to be free because we've never been able to free our minds from bondage. Where to free your mind from bondage is to free your mind from sin, and to free your mind from sin is to be one with Yah. Right? Right? And so we must establish, even in our own time, the houses of our children so they may be better off than us, Hebrew men. Right? And so now let's go to the blueprint of a father establishing a house for his son. Let's go to Genesis 2. Let's go to Genesis 2. Let's start at 1. Let's go to Genesis 2 and 1. <laughs> Not yet. Genesis chapter one, I mean, chapter two, we're going to start at verse one. This is the book of Genesis chapter two, verse one. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. Mm. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified. Them. So now. That, that Sirach 3 and 9 is coming to play. It said what? The father establishes. What does establish mean? Anybody can tell me? He said that he needs to be built. This is something he's worked. What does establish mean? To, to make known or to... Uh, so where are the things you To like set an order, pretty much. Or to make all the need to establish. To set an order for something. To set a foundation for something. Right? Huh? A base, right? Because going back to what we talked about, the children are what? The base of the parents. So he set the base for the children so that they may build from the ground up from what he's already established. And so we see the father saying, I've established the earth. We see that, right? Mm -hmm. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he has made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And so we see the father creating an establishment. He created an environment of dominion, right? Come on. And God blessed the seventh day. He what? And he blessed the seventh day mm. and sanctified it mm -hmm. because that in it he had rested from all his work, which Elohim mm -hmm. created mm -hmm. and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. When there were created in the day that the Lord created, uh, Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth mm. and every earth was the field before it grew. So he's even establishing. So we see the earth is also a form of a house. So he's establishing the house. Right. He's also making sure that there's food there that can nourish and give his son 
what he needs to continue on with his business. Come on. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, mm. and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Right. So now we on, we, we talked about this earlier. Water represents what? The spirit. It does not the spirit guide you. So now we're looking at the instructions being put in place for this for the son to follow, right? We're seeing the instructions being established. And so he said he was not going to even multiply anything else until he had somebody to fulfill what, what they call it, a successor. A successor, right? Same thing we also see with Moses. If you see the transition of Moses to Joshua, he started to establish more as he knew Joshua was about to take over. Right? Come on. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust mm. of the ground. And breathed what? And breathed into his mouth. Mm. The breath of life. The what? The breath of life. Now, what does the scripture say the life is? The life is what? The blood. The blood. And the blood is a representation of what? DNA. Genetic instructions. So Adam was born with the, the heavenly instructions of his father. He was birthed into the instructions. Half of us as Hebrew men, we're not birthed into this life. We have what we would call distorted DNA. It's misconstrued DNA, right? Because we have been birthed to multiply our enemy. We have been birthed to multiply his kingdom. And so even when we come into this walk, because we're angered like our enemy, we have dysfunction like our enemy, we have, we have confusion like our enemy, we bring that same genetic genetically modified attitude into this walk. When the father said, you're supposed to be a renewed man. A new, why do you, why you think he called you a new creature? You ain't supposed to be that same old man that you was in the world. Angry, bitter, hurting your own people. You're supposed to come into this walk renewed because you can't even follow his righteous instructions with your unrighteous mind. Right. <laughs> one, more yeah, one more time. I say you can't even follow his righteous instructions with your unrighteous mind. Mm -hmm. Because remember, this all plays a key. To be a Hebrew means you're genetically connected with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So to say that you know that means you had to cross over, or even when we look at Hebrew, they had to cross the Red Sea, meaning they were washed. They were washed. They were birthed. They came from that travail like a woman birthing the baby. They went through those growing pains and came out and were supposed to be new. But because they could not leave off the enemy or as we would call it, the old man, they couldn't even perceive the instruction they was, he was given. They couldn't understand why they had to eat unleavened bread. They could not understand why they needed somebody to redeem them. They couldn't convey. They couldn't understand that. And so this is the problem we're having in our community while brothers can't get their houses established because they can't really understand the instructions of the father that he's been giving us since the beginning of time. When it's in your DNA. But just like when we got to deal with clients, we got to cleanse them. We got we to gotta spiritually be cleansed from this enemy. We got to spiritually detox from this enemy because he has tainted every cellular structure in our body. From what we eat, from how we dress, from how we think, from how we deal with one another. Their love is something, just it's a word. Everything is a word to them, there's no action behind it. But according to the Bible, love is an action, right? But we think because we Hebrew, the love is just, right, that's, it stops right there. No, it was an action behind saying I ahab you or I ahava, right? It's a difference, oh head, it's a difference. So when we come over here, as Hebrew men who's supposed to cross over from bondage, we're supposed to leave off those distorted instructions and take on these righteous instructions. But when we don't come into the ordinance to see everything is an order, even for me, even for me. Let's go to First Peter. It's going off topic now. Go to First Peter five. First Peter five. Let's go there real quick because we got this thing of thinking that, thinking that uh. 
we're supposed to be free in a sense of not taking any type of instructions from anybody. First Peter 5. Uh -huh. First Peter 5. And one. It's the book of First Peter, chapter 5, verse 1. Uh -huh. The elders which are among you, mm -hmm. I exhort. It what? The elders which are among you, I exhort. What's that? What does it go? Exhort mean? Raise up. That means I raised them up. I put them in his place. Come on. Who am also an elder. Mm, so this is another man who's in wisdom, also who's in authority, huh? He's an authority. He had to be but to speak something like this. And it had to be one of them who followed Christ. Yeah. So who gave him an authority to speak like this? Mm -hmm. Scripture say Christ gives me the authority to speak. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Come on. And a witness of suffering mm -hmm. of a Mashiach and also a partaker of the glory. Mm, so yeah. now we're talking about this type of man that he's talking about. This is a man with experience. This is a man of wisdom. This is a man who went through something enough just to tell me, young man, you probably shouldn't do that. I have an example because I went through that in my life. I'm telling you, if you go down this road, this is what's going to happen. But if you follow me through what I've had to endure and learn, I can tell you the righteous way. But no, some things we just think that no man can tell us to do. Huh? There's always been a a a a what we want to say a uh, a mediator. There's always been a man between even even for men. There's always been a man between men and Yah. You tell me one part in this scripture, you can show me a man who didn't have to take heed to another man to get instructions. King King David himself had to go through Nathan. He had to go through Nathan. He was a king. One of the most righteous kings. Moses, our great forefather, had to grow, go through, as we would call him, a Gentile. Uh-oh. Huh? He was Hebrew, but he was technically a Gentile. Because he came from the lineage of who? Katara. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> you see? So when we start to see that this whole thing, anybody who speaks that you, you shouldn't have any type of proper instruction or guidance, this is probably a person who's who's pretty much wicked. This is a person who hides in the darkest sin or her sin. This is a person who who, who don't want to be accountable for their actions. A know-it-all. They don't want nobody to correct them. Huh? They think the Holy Spirit is going to come down and tell them they're wrong. No, he's manifest, manifested us to be a witness either for each other or against each other. Period. So to think as Hebrew men, Hebrew is like men, that we're not supposed to have accountability to each other, that's a Gentile mindset because the Gentiles think like that. They think they ain't got to submit to no man. They think they can go through anything and everybody without no consequences. And they're divided. And they're divided. That's a Gentile mindset, man. So you see that obviously is brothers put in place to help instruct those who do not know, those who do not know the way. So you see even also in the New Testament, he set up men with experience, obviously, to lead the way of those who came in to the covenant, who converted. Because obviously we've been apart or detached from it for 400 some years or more. So he's setting brothers in place to do that. So to think that that's not even part of the process, you can't even expect you have a righteous family in order because you ain't even get put in order yet. He read. Feed the flock of Elohim, which is among you. Say what? Feed the flock of Elohim. Feed them with what? The word. The word. The instructions. You need to be guided. Can a sheep wander off by himself and be okay? Mm -hmm. They need a shepherd. And we're going to see who he put in place until the chief shepherd returns. Come on. He called us sheep for a reason. And if the chief shepherd is gone, who's to tend to his flock? When you start putting it in perspective like that, then it start making sense, huh? The chief shepherd is gone. 
unless you can tell me y'all shoe was right here guiding you with his staff right now, and you see him daily, you will be a dang lie. You will be a dang lie. Because he himself said he's not here because he got to go prepare a place for you. So he's leaving a steward in his stead till he get back. Come on. Feed the flock of Elohim, which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof. Mm. Taking the what? Oversight thereof. Let's see what oversight means. Let's see what oversight means. Mm. Oversight. To look upon. To inspect. Oversee. Look after. So uh, if I say I'm about to leave the house, can you look after my children? What does that mean? Take care of us, oversee. Mm. Um, yeah. Take care of, oversee. Mm, to look carefully, mm. to look after. So if my children run out the house, and obviously a street right there, if I'm telling you to look after them, most likely you're looking after is going to tell them that's the wrong thing to do. But guess what? You not over them. You just looking after them until I return. I left the instruction. If I say, or oh, I talk to Sarah, because Sarah been here. Sarah, they go to bed at at uh at uh they go to bed at nine o'clock. That's what time I put them to bed. Can you make sure they in bed? Can you look after them while I'm gone? What you gonna do? Make sure they ain't in bed by nine o'clock. So what makes us think that even as men? We not supposed to have somebody guide or instruct us too in the flesh. Because we are sheep to Yah or Yahushua. And he's not here to, to guide us in that physical manner like he was with Peter. And so he put men, he, he said, I left men, I left teachers, huh? Deacons, prophets, all these people he left in his stead till he returned. Which we can go to that too. So we can drop that. Let's go back to Genesis 2. And I just wanted to, to, to get to that because obviously you see with the father in Genesis, he couldn't even multiply any more until he had somebody as a steward to watch over this garden, what we call the Garden of Eden. So you see, I think you posted this earlier about the process. It's a process. Everything is an ordained order. Everything, even with men. Even with men. Believe it or not. When we return, that same ordinance as we see in Deuteronomy 1, of setting up judges is going to be the same thing we see in the king. Ain't no running from order. This whole free spirit thing, you ain't got to take nobody order from nothing. That, that, that's BS. That's BS. You just don't want to be held accountable. Period. Let's keep going. And that the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils. So he breathed, in, he breathed into his nostrils the instructions, the genetic instructions. Come on. And man became a living soul. Uh huh. And the Lord God planted a garden east for him. Mm, come on. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So now, now once he had the man, he then multiplied it and had specific instructions on how to protect him and guard. Come on. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant mm -hmm. to thy sight mm -hmm. and good for food. Mm -hmm. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right. And a river went out of Eden to the water, to water the garden. Mm -hmm. And from thence it was parted and became into four threads. Mm -hmm. The name of the first is Pison. That is which encompasses the whole land of Havilah. Which there is gold. Which there is what? Gold. So that man had money. He had money. He had resources. You see, he had the rivers flowing, which means that his soil was good. He had good, clean water with nice amount of minerals in it, right? You see this man having abundance. That man had that pH balance, right? <laughs> that man has true substance. So you see, now, we don't see Adam working just yet. We see the father had things in place then by way of what he already created which the earth which brought forth him seed 
Now he's giving, he's creating a place or preparing a place for his child that he may be a steward to his kingdom. He's giving us the blueprint on how we should establish our children's houses. Sirach 3 and 9, I'm going to read that again. It says, for the blessings of the father establishes the houses of the children, but the curse of the mother rooteth out foundation. Period. As Hebrew men, we should be establishing a kingdom for our children. And if we're not doing that, we can sit here and, and multiply as many wives as we want. But if we're not doing that for our children, you're nothing but a deadbeat. Straight up. You're not even fulfilling your purpose. You're not even fulfilling your purpose. Your whole purpose is to be fruitful and multiply. That's your whole purpose. If you're not doing that, you're being useless yourself. You just want to look good with something. Huh? Because there's also such thing as having ungodly children. <laughs> Let's talk about it. There's also such thing as having ungodly children. Which most likely, if you have ungodly children, because you was pre producing ungodly seed. And somewhere down the line, the lineage was distorted. And it came by way of you. Come on now. Let's get back to it. Genesis 2 and uh, 20, 20, 11. Yeah, 12 now. Uh, and the gold of that land is good. There is Medellin and Yonic Stone. Ooh. And the name of that the man balling, ain't he? That man balling. Bro, you know, they're killing folks over there for types this type of stuff. That man, that man was planted in it. Now imagine you, imagine you, Elder. Your father established your house. First thing you see about. Three trillion dollars on the table. You probably gonna know what to do with that. Oh yeah. Oh man, you gonna you gonna ask that if you serve him even longer. <laughs> All the days of my life. Whatever you need, Abba. That's it. Whatever you need. Because obviously you I you love me enough to have an established for me. And all I gotta do is watch over it. And typically that's all Adam had to do was watch over it. Dress it, guard it, protect it, shema. That's all he had to do. It was already established for him, right? And so you see the opposite side of that in our lives is because no, no, nobody established something for us. Now we got to work, like we would say, ass backwards. We got to, they say, go to college in debt, working nine to five. You ain't getting paid, you ain't getting paid half of what you really owe, huh? You grew up in an environment with nothing but depression, oppression, and suppression. Huh? You grew up, you grew up with in a, in a family of dysfunction. All these things working against what you really supposed to have a status by the time you consider the man. And that's because we're in an unnatural environment that really does not produce good food. We like, we're like that, that, that rose that grew from concrete. Barely made, but we're so noticeable, right? And so we got these instructions. Now, there, I, I said it before we went live. There is no more excuses on why you don't know what to do in your life when you got these instructions in hand. The father left you this in hand, a comforter, right? That was the comforter, right? What's the comforter? Something that keeps you safe, sound. This is your safe haven. This is the scriptures. Your instructions is your safe haven. It tells you if you do e evil, what shall happen to you? If you do good, this shall happen to you. So there is no excuse why you're sinning. There is no excuse why your life is bad, really, if you got the instructions. Like math, like follow the, follow the um, formula. Exactly. And see, e even in Torah, right, this is how important it is to get in this Bible. Because they tell you in Torah that your conversations around the house with your children should be the commandments. You sit at the table talking about the word. You you buying past each other talking about the word. How many of us is doing that in our houses? This is how you actually establish the instructions in your children's heart. But we so consume the businesses. We could so consume the what's going on in the world. And we're not really preparing our children for a Goshen. We're not preparing them for a Goshen. We, we're preparing them for Babylon. Still, even in this Hebrew mind state, quote unquote, 
We're not preparing a place for them because we are not all the way in it like we think we are. Because we, again, we have totally discontinued from our inheritance. This is inheritance. There's no more excuse for it. Okay? Let's keep going. And the name of the third river is Hakadel. That is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. Mm -hmm. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden. So this, the Most High instructed Adam. And he placed him in his purpose. So, I mean, Adam didn't figure out. He didn't guess. He didn't try to decide where he was going. His father put him there. His father gave him an assignment. Huh? He gave them an assignment. How many of y'all got, got an assignment? Who gave you? Who gave it to you? Who told you to be a nurse? A doctor? Huh? Who told you to be a cashier? Who told you to be these things? Who gave you that assignment? Because it comes down to this thing. Everything y'all created. Matter of fact, let's go to that. John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. I don't like you to see these, uh, these movies of um, these sons not wanting to follow in the, father, in the father's business. Mm -hmm. What a line of work. And people used to think, man, that's so liberating. You just want to cut out his whole path. But when you really think about it, it's like your father established the way for you to go and you want to do total opposite. Okay. That's true, man. And that's again, but that's a Gentile mind state. They tell you to go against the grain. They be you ever know, you see them little white boys cussing out their mama, calling them out their name, calling them B words, and then they make up and, and, and do some ancestral stuff, kissing each other in the mouth, all that nasty stuff they do. It's total dysfunction and confusion in their house. And they teach us that same method in thinking. That same method in thinking. Talk to your parents crazy. Huh? Don't listen to them. Do your own thing. It's okay to be homosexual. You weren't born with a sex. You have a choice. What? So you mean to tell me now if a brother got a rod, he, he can choose if what sex he want to be. That's the type of confusion that with this it comes with, with this system. Total Bible. Non-binary means you don't choose anything. So it's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Straight up, bro. It's non-binary. Yeah, like, you don't choose anything. The thing I'm the binary is to try to make things one. Mm-hmm. Let's go John 1. John 1 and 1, right? So we were going through it, right? We see that the father took Adam. Gave him his assignment. Now we was talking about having that assignment. Who gave it to you? So remember, every and we're gonna go through it. All things were made for God by him. And without him, they really have no purpose. Come on. It's the book of John, chapter one, verse one. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word, mm -hmm. and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Which we see the beginning is what? Adam. In the beginning was a die. The same was with, was in the beginning with Elohim. This, this the same instructions. We're talking about the New Testament right now. The same instructions that, that they're talking about right here in this dispensation of time is the same instructions that was there in the beginning. But I thought it changed. <laughs> I thought it changed, huh? Nah. The only thing that changed was the people. The instructions never changed. It was the people that changed. Come on. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. Read it again. All things were made by him, and without and him, without him, come on, was not anything made that was made. And without him, that was was not anything made that was made. Meaning, anything that he, he's created that is not functioning. How he created it to function is not with him. Therefore, it's not made, meaning it has no purpose. So as Hebrew men who's supposed to be guiding these families, 
Are you walking in the purpose that Yah is giving you? And if you have not figured that out yet, you got to analyze your life and then ask yourself who you follow. Who are you following? Because you, remember, we went through this. Your life is supposed to be a reflection of Yah's kingdom. And all things are good and peaceable in Yah's kingdom. It's nothing but love and shalom in Yah's kingdom. So if you see nothing but chaos, disruption, confusion, rebellion in your house, most likely Yah did not establish it and you're not walking in purpose. Brothers got to start examining themselves. These women ain't going crazy for no reason. Yeah, a lot of them is broken. Let's just put it what it is. A lot of women are broken. But like I said last week, it should not be no way that you're not redeeming her, but she redeeming you. How is she redeeming you? When we see our king, when he come back, if you really look into the scriptures, He's coming back for a ready bride. That means this bride had to already go through the process to be ready. He ain't coming back for no bride that still don't know or confused if she want to go with him or not. He's coming back for a ready bride. That means she went through the process and prepared herself for him. Right? A wife adorned and prepared for her husband. Okay? Let's go back to Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Let's get it. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden uh -huh. to dress it and to keep it. Mm, and the Lord what? God to, to dress it and to keep it. Let's get to that real quick. Let's get to that dress it. So what does dress mean? To dress means to work or serve, right? The Hebrew word for dress is abad, abad, right? Means to work, serve, or labor. So for all you Negroes who say you're just supposed to be teaching the word, Adam, even before his fall, wasn't even giving that instructions. What is Negroes talking about, man? Adam. The Adam, the natural generic man. And then mind you, this is before sin had befallen on him. This is before. Now the thing was, this was the extent of after sin. Because technically you're supposed to labor then, most high said rest. We ain't in our rest because we ain't in our purpose. We got brothers who got issues taking the Sabbath off can't work maybe just maybe the reason even in this captivity because we got obviously we got examples of people in captivity that's still blessed right they still working in their purpose so maybe it's just maybe that you ain't walking in purpose of yah why you can't get sabbath off why you can't get feast days off maybe just because you ain't walking in purpose with yah you walking in what you want to do you got this whole, again, you walking your own purpose. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get my license. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm do this, this, and that. And then just come find out, for you to even get what you're trying to get, you got to sacrifice your instructions with y'all. You're going to have to give something. Something got to get sacrificed. So the reason you really ain't getting off Sabbath because you was you sacrificed y'all's instructions for your own bill. Huh? Abraham could have did that right. He was living cool. He was good. Family was good. Father was obviously had established something, but the most I said, you had to forsake all that to get what I got for you. Luke 18, 28. There's not been one man who have not forsaken house, no wife, no children, no father, no mother. For the kingdom of heaven's sake. That we shall receive what? Manifold in this life, in the life to come. So we see by the instructions that Yah 
has given us that even in this captivity, if we take hold and cross over and assimilate ourselves to his instructions, that we too can have peace and dominion over our earth. Over our earth. We got to stop making excuses as men. While we broke, we got to stop making excuses as men. Why our women can't be happy. It ain't just because she can't follow the instructions. Maybe it's just because she realized in her spirit, she just can't convey it, that you might not just be a man of God. She just don't know how to express it. She don't know what's telling her that you ain't it. But of course, because her own lust, she fell for you and didn't look past the flesh. It just is what it is. Cause and effect. For every action, there's a reaction. That's so why I tell people, let's not, let's not talk about what you're going through. Now, how did you get there? Huh? Just like we ask, we ask, we ask people who, who got it, people with money. We ask people with all these riches or, or houses. Hey, man, what did you do to get there? We got to start asking folks who got issues, how did you get there? Right? And you'll find out at the root is this. They chose their way rather than Yah's way. And when we get down to the nitty gritty, ain't no more, ain't no other purpose of us talking about what else, what else has transpired. The problem is you just didn't follow Yah. So let's just stay there. I don't even need to know what else happened. You didn't follow Yah. Reaction. Reaction. And so as Hebrew men, we have to understand this same establishment must be in our house. Do not bring no woman in your situation if you got a situation. <laughs> Real, you got a situation. Why would you bring her in? Because you want her to be your comforter. You got this whole Bible that you talk about you teach every Shabbat, every Wednesday, whatever the case is. Yet you need a woman to comfort you. For what? You got yeah. Because you're still trying to please yourself. You're spiritually masturbating. Mm. It is what it is. So we see to dress the garden means to work the garden for my non working Hebrews. <laughs> for my non working <laughs> Hebrews. To dress the garden means to work it. What else did he say? Oh, let's go to that word keep. Let's go to the word keep. Keep means shamar. Shamar means to guard, to give heed, to be a what? A watchman, brothers. So you're supposed to be able to watch over your house. You know what I say? You cannot protect it. You cannot keep it. And obviously, as we go further in the story, Adam could not keep. He could not protect so therefore, you cannot keep the garden. Let this be a witness for you, brothers, that there's only one way. As they say, they say the highway or the byway. We're going to say Yahweh or the byway. Period. Let's keep reading now. Yahweh, no, no pun intended. <laughs> Come on. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. Mm. I will make him and help him for him. Oh, okay. So now the father establishes the house for his children, right? He gives the, he gives the children instructions. So with these instructions, obviously the father knows him best to know he's going to need help, right? So it says it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a help me. And so we went over what help me means. In the Hebrew, the word is azir. The, the root definition of that is to be a soldier. So that means obviously you have, the father has set up another protection or defense for you to guard what you're supposed to keep. The woman is not supposed to be equal to you. She's supposed to be your extra defense with what the father has given you. But you want her to... to to, to, to 
establish her own house and you just put your name on it. Okay. Huh? You want her to you want her to pay the car car bill? Huh? You want her to mow the lawn? Take out the trash. You just want to put your name on it. But we see the father, he didn't just sit back and just say, do. He showed and then he tell. He established the house for Adam and then he told Adam how to keep it and multiply it like he did. Show and tell. Is this not the Hebrew culture? That's what the that's the whole point of the language. It's an actionary language. It's not an affectionate language that sounds good and smooth. No, it's an actionary language. That's so, supposed to define action. You calling yourself a ab or abab, you calling yourself a ish. If you're calling yourself a Adon, a Malek, a Zakain, you're calling yourself a Sar, a Nasi, these things is what you're establishing is authority. But before you, but most people use these titles as authority over people and not area. Obviously, we see Adam couldn't have dominion over anybody until he had dominion over his property. Which was given to him by his father. Thank you. Which was given to him by his father. You understand? There is an order. There's an order to this. And we're going to go through it later. But what you really see establishing, honestly, is the rites of passage. You see the father establishing the rites of passage with Adam. He's showing him, this is mine. Watch over it. Once Adam then proved that he could watch over it, then he establishes a help me for him to guard him, also help protect and guard this place too. How you gonna pull a woman and helping you watch over your stuff when you can't handle it? You see how ass backwards we are as a people? Brothers are sitting here because he, he could teach the word, you know, hella precepts. That because his job in his eyes is just to teach the word, which don't take care of, because then that would totally debunk the Torah, which says that you should not diminish her what? Her raiment. What raiment are you giving her when you ain't got a damn pot to piss in yourself? Okay. So you totally breaking the law yourself sitting here under a woman's roof and not doing a damn thing. You totally breaking Torah. If for your sinning. Oh, yeah, we're gonna get to that, huh? If you sitting there being slothful, not doing a damn thing, not establishing anything for your house, you are sinning, especially if you got a wife. Because you're diminishing what you're supposed to be supplying her if she's under your authority. See, brothers don't want to get into this type of thing because now we this is where we get to exposure. We start measuring people by the book. Brothers don't want to measure nobody by the book no more because this because we Hebrew Israelites. Oh, well, let's just teach the good news and, and, and let's be unified. No, let's let's talk about the real thing. Let's get, get away from the fairy tale and all that good stuff. Let's talk about how, brother, you sitting here on the couch reading Exodus for three weeks and, and your, your wife is sitting here hungry. Your children saying, ah, but where's the next meal? And you telling them, my whole agenda and job and objective is just to teach the word. And then you got a problem when your woman say, nigga, you supposed to live it. <laughs> you supposed to live it. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. These wicked Eves. These wicked Eves going off. Oh, she going off. Huh? Nah, brother. Maybe the most high speaking through her to you. Because he's been trying to convey this message to you that you're trying to convey to other people, but you ain't even applying it yourself. See, when brothers start being real with themselves and just acknowledging, and we understand, yeah, it's, it's good for a man to have a wife. It is, right? It is it's really good. But why would you put anybody in that situation to where you really can hinder somebody's or render somebody from salvation? Right? How can you do that? 
So when we start thinking on that type of level about each other, I guarantee we would not have half of the issues we have in the community, even dealing with polygamy. Because you got you establishing your authority. Right? Come on. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Mm, so now Adam, now mind you, Eve is not on the scene yet. And so what Adam is doing is showing that he's a good manager. Because now that that the that the master of of this realm has left him to manage this, now he's able because he's taking his father's instruction to now assign those who he's over instructions. And brothers, you have to have an instruction for your wife. You can't just have her because you just want to be fruitful in your way, in your mind, and not really multiply. Huh? You multiply your drama, your issues. You could be multiplying children, but they, they growing up uncircumcised. So you have to be able to give your woman a purpose and instructions. Because let's be honest, our woman, our woman ain't lazy at all, bro. They they real real live workhorses. Y'all sisters real live workhorses. And so if she get bored, she gonna start to have itchy fingers. She gonna be like, nigga, I need something to do. We just sitting here watching Cartoon Network and just having sex all day and cutting it for me. <laughs> we need a little. I need something to do, man. And if you don't find me something to do, I got to go find it myself. And like I said last week, most likely she, she ain't getting it from you. She getting it from her slave dad. He got plenty of her to do. I'm going to go over it again. Because he'll give her insurance, reassurance. He'll give her money. He'll give her protection. He'll make her feel comfortable. He'll even give her a house on his program. He'll give her everything you're supposed to give her and you still complaining why she won't submit to you. This is the mind frame of our enemies. That's why they tried to break up the family and bring the black man, so-called black man, and the Hebrew man to a low estate to a point that they had to, we, we always in the fight or flight stage, to the point that it will be hard for us to make in this in this society so now, guess what? If it's hard for us to make it in, in this society, and they have they have psychologically made warfare against our women to turn them against us as as modern weapons of warfare, and then he gives them what they need. How do you then win? Which brings us back to it. There's no there's only one way, and that's following your father's instructions. You tried to hustle. You try to sell drugs. You try to do the credit card thing. You try to work for the white man. And none of those things is working. And none of those things is really giving you your, your respect that your woman uh, should be giving you. But when we come into this thing, right, one thing we can give our sisters is when they get into this thing and they do get a husband, they'll start submitting in the beginning. They, got, they really do got a heart to submit in the beginning. But it's when those times get hard, when you're not doing something for her, she starts to really go off. And that's because you, you're not fulfilling your purpose as a man. You're not fulfilling your purpose. So what should she do? You know you ain't doing time. Like, no, blame me. You, you get your Adam on. Father, you gave me this woman. No accountability. Right? Put everything on a woman. Because we not, we, it's no other way except the father, it's the father, the fatherly instructions. There's no other way. There's no other way to win in this society. There's no other, other other way to actually redeem you from this society. And we see he gave us a blueprint, even in the land of our enemy. Because he also said that if we repent, even though even our enemy shall be at peace with us. So he even said that to us. Right. He said that even if you repent, meaning turn away from your wickedness, 
Stop falling after the ways of the heathen and turn to him that even your enemy shall be at peace with you in the land of your captivity. Hey Amen. The father made a way with ain't no damn excuse. We ain't got no damn excuse. So again, is your life a reflection of Yah's kingdom? Are you truly setting an inheritance up for your children? Are you following your father's blueprint? It's no point, like Elder said, it's no point of reinventing the wheel. It's already here. It's already here. Stop trying to adapt and, 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 and twist and, and bend. Ain't no bending with y'all. It's either Yahweh or the highway. Or no way. The rules are already in place. Already in place. I mean, to me, I ain't gonna lie. When I actually start to get it, I'm like, damn, it's actually kind of easy. If you think about it, it's actually kind of easy. Follow those instructions. Establish a home. Establish some, some land. Establish things for your household. And then you shall be blessed. Because now a wife can then actually function in her purpose. That Proverbs 31 woman was talking about a, a woman working for her husband. Not the system. She wasn't working for no other man. She was working for her husband. But again, brother, you ain't got nothing to give her. How do you think you're going to get some respect? Bro, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. Because most I said, ain't no respect to persons. <laughs> ain't no respect to persons. So she, hey, she, hey, it is what it is. Exactly. Okay. So let's keep going. We have verse 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. Amen. And he every he made paper time. And every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam uh -huh. to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name to her. Right. So now he gave these animals a purpose. He gave them instructions and a function. Come on. And Adam, Adam gave names to all cattle mm -hmm. and to the fowl of the air mm -hmm. and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and helping for him. Right. And the Lord caused a deep sleep upon, to fall upon us. Uh -huh. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and clothes of his flesh mm -hmm. instead of thereof. And the rib which, was, which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman. So again, let's let's go through this too. The whole purpose, he said he took he took this woman from his rib. Why do you think that specific area? What does the rib protect? Ooh, let's talk about it. Proverbs 31. The husband doeth trust in his heart and his wife's hand. Mm. So this obviously have to be a woman you can trust to protect what the father has given you meaning protect your name which is your function which is your function so he took it from his rib right to be a protection to be that that protection of his heart which is ultimately his mind his resting place his temple okay Come on. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone mm. and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Because she was what? Taken out of man. So what are we saying? This woman is the reflection of the man. Is the reflection of the man. But guess what? Did Adam establish his own righteousness with his wife? No. Who gave him his wife? The father. Who? The father. The father gave him his wife because the father knows what's best. Let's read it again. Sirach 3 and 9. For the blessing of the father establishes the house of the children. The blessing that comes from the father is also a wife. But usually that's actually the last thing. That's the last thing. Think about it. Let's go to Jacob. Now, although we know in his situation, he didn't get what he was supposed to get in the beginning after his turn. But we also know at the end of his turn, what was he getting established? Substance. 
He was getting cattle. He was getting a place to rest. And then at the end of his term, he got a wife. LeBron was establishing, if you look at it, LeBron was helping establish Jacob's house. Right? So we even see with Jacob, there's a man establishing his house. Brothers, who was helping you establish your house? Believe it or not, Yahushua left men in his stead to be a representation to help his flock. Who is helping you establish your house on this earth? Who is helping mold that Christ mind in you? <laughs> right? Let's talk about it. He got what he needed in the beginning. And then he got what he wanted. Ooh, Elder Elijah dropped the bomb on that one, didn't he? Yeah, the Elder Elijah, he just dropped the bomb on that. He got what he needed first, then he got what he wanted. Right? Same, same thing we see in scriptures. He tells you, if you believe, right? If you believe and have no fear in your heart, all the desire of your heart shall come to pass. So the thing is this. Remember, he, always, he also said this. Before you speak, you already know what you want. So why are we worrying about trying to get what we want when he already know? We, he just needs us to do what he needs us to do. And then he will give us that. So that's a great, good point you brought up. Then he gives us what we want. It don't work the other way. We think we're supposed to get what we want, then we'll start working on what we, what we need to get him. It don't work like that, man. That's a Gentile state of mind. That's just like a Gentile. They sit here and take the land, didn't really have a plan, then they start establishing what they really want. No, nah, it don't work like that. Say if he would have got what he wanted, if he would have kept pressing. Ooh, -wee. that's why we go. We went over the prodigal son. He got what he wanted too quickly, yeah, and didn't know what to do with it. He didn't know what to do with it. Didn't have nothing established. Didn't have nothing established, and he started doing riotous living, uncontrollable living because he did not follow the instructions of his father. So we can pretty much we could drop that right there. Let's go to Sirach twenty five and one. So rock 25 on. Let me get a camera here, buddy. There. Let's get it. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. In three things I was beautiful and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. The unity of brethren. So where's the brethren? The brethren is establishing the family. Huh? That's a stat that's showing that you're a good son and a good brother. Then what happened? The, the, the love of the neighbors, the right? The neighbors. Which establishes what? That you can work good amongst your people. Then what was the last thing? A man and a wife that agreed, agreed together. Say it again. A man and a wife that agreed together. So these are the stages of, as men we got to go through. Are we a good son? Are we a good brother? Once we become a good brother and a son, how do we function in our community? How do we bring our purpose to our community? Because then we shall establish our house by how we treat our people. Then we can have a wife that is in agreement by how we are living. Most of us go into marriages with no agreement. Woo! Ooh -wee. We go into marriage with no agreement and wondering why things are not functioning like we're supposed to have this in our heart. We're not there yet. Just to be honest, we're not there yet. We have to be, somebody has to teach us how to be a good son or a good father. Somebody has to teach us what does a man with a family look like? Huh? You have to see it. Somebody got to teach you how to establish land. So obviously we need people to teach us these things. But if we don't go through the proper steps and protocols, everything we try to put our hands on shall fail. So I want to read this passage real quick for those who watch it. Uh, we're going to read out the book, The Them and Him, 
by Dr. Gina Murray. We're going to read out the book, The Demon Hymn by Dr. Gina Murray. Uh, honest to, to Elder Elder Thomas Murray. Uh, him, and his, him and his beautiful family definitely put a good literature together. Definitely was suggested to any families out there who's trying to understand the biblical family structure of the Bible. Very, very good read. So we're going to read out, uh, we're going to start at page 29. <laughs> Page 29. 29? Yeah. In the excerpt from Genesis, Jen, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. You're going to start, uh, actually, you're going to. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, you're going to start. Yep. In quotations above, the pronouns are intentionally underscored to emphasize the man. The first main concept in our discussion about the creation of marriage, the them and him, this takes place in the mind of God before anything was made that was made. Mm -hmm. He had an idea for a man to fulfill a purpose, and within the area for the man unit, the yeah, man unit, were male and female components. The focus being function through order and complementary complement. Yeah. Attention, your battery is running low. Please plug in the power adapter now. Right. So, so as you know, when you go through the narrative that uh that hold on real quick. Hold this over. Yeah. As you know, the, the the name Adam, it means man, like mankind. So even before the actual Adam. The man was made. He was talking about mankind, meaning even man and woman. Because remember, when you go through the narrative, that these things are supposed to function as one. The man and the woman are supposed to move as one. The man and the woman was both have, supposed to have dominion over the earth. That don't mean you go out of order. I mean y'all equally, but there's a process. There's an order to it. So man and woman, Adam, the Adamic man and woman, was supposed to have dominion over the earth. Meaning they were supposed to function in the same mind on how to rule this earth. Come on. The role or, fu or function of each component will be discussed in more detail later. The purpose, empowerment, dominion, blessing, and the commandment were all given to them as a unit. The blessing and plan for dominion were not given to either male or female individually. This cannot be emphasized enough. Though within the unity, there is a preeminence given to the male because he is most accountable for the overall purpose and the entity. And as well, we will discuss later. So you see, with the body, there's only one head, right? There's only one head on the body. So in the function of a man and woman being one, there's still only one head. Although we physically see, obviously, there's two heads. A man have a head and a woman have a head. But in the natural order and spiritual order that the most high recognizes, even when he look at that woman, he's looking at that man. He ain't looking at that woman. Any action that woman do, he's looking at that man. As, as far as when it comes to marriage and family, he's not looking at the one. He's looking at, okay, when she go off, okay, Adam, why is she going off? She want to she wanna yell at the man. Okay, Adam, why is she yelling at you? <laughs> She don't want to listen to follow instructions. Adam, why she ain't following instructions? That's how he worked. He ain't talking to her. He's talking to you. He, then you talk to her. That's how. That's the order of it. First Corinthians 5, uh, uh, 11, right? The head of Christ is the most high. The head of man is Christ. The head of woman is man. And that's just how he deals. So that even, you know, uh, going to this whole thing, women thinking they're going to go through, uh, go to Christ without the man. Yeah, stop it. Okay. Stop it. Let's get to it. Stop it. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, and this is why it's imperative that we make sure we got the right partners, even for the women, because we'll see, we can see constantly through scripture. When a man go off, his family suffers the persecution with him. So that means what, women? That you got to make sure that this is the right man. Because even if you feel like you're living right, you shall die too. Everybody who went in captivity wasn't, wasn't unrighteous. 
but they still had to suffer that persecution. So all this 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 dogma, some of these uh, rebellious sister teaching to go to Christ without the man. Hey, cut that out, man. Cut all that stuff out, man. You lying to your damn self. And we got plenty of receipts in the scriptures to prove that. Now, now let's do, we do have a way where if she is if she is just in the Most High's eyes, she make a way. We got a uh, the roof, the roof. Yep, we got roof. Made a way, right? So there is there you have situation, but most of the time we go to the time of uh, the with, with Moses, where where the brother's family got swallowed up by the earth. He went off, right? He went off. You got you got also the brothers who came before Peter and lied about giving their portion of it. Both of them died. Finished. He said, You're gonna be just like your husband getting carried out that door. Lie again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this whole thing of thinking that we that, that, that's that's the problem. It's it's become an individualistic walk. Yes, okay, we will, it's, it's, a, it's an individual project with group effort. That's a fact. Because at the end of the day, you still, because at the end of the day, wives, if you're supposed to be a protection over your husband's garden and you see an enemy that he may be entangled with, that he may not see and you ain't saying nothing, it's still your fault. <laughs> <laughs> With Deuteronomy 25. <laughs> oh, what do you think I should do? Uh, I, go, I ain't getting to it on here. But yeah, keep, keep reading. <laughs> The blessings and plan for dominion were not given to either male or female uh -huh. individually. This Say it again. Say that again. Individually. And what? Individually. Come on. This cannot be emphasized enough. Mm -hmm. Though within the unity, there is preeminence given to the male because he is most accountable for the overall purpose mm -hmm. of the entity. Mm -hmm. As we will discuss later, she is taken out from him. The intended purpose, authority, dominion, and blessings are only fully available in the state of unity or completion mm. of the comp complementary. Oh, yeah. Complementary. Complementary. Uh -huh. Resembling the unified state of the Godhead. Mm. Why do so many husbands? So wives, now, just like they say, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Godhead. It's also supposed to be, I would say, a miniature Godhead within the house because who's the head of the man? So it's supposed to be Christ, man, and a woman, and they agree in one. So if the Christ is the, the head of man, because that's what the whole thing of the Ephesians is about, is the Godhead. That's the Godhead. So if we're functioning in that Godhead, this is why he told the man that you're supposed to love your wife as you love yourself. You're supposed to love your wife as Hamashiach loved the church. And then woman, you're supposed to submit to that man as Hamashiach. It all works at one. And the spirit bear witness to that. Come on. Why do so many husbands and wives exalt the details of munition, of the life of love maintaining the state of unity or oneness? The only thing which is supersedes maintaining the state of oneness between husband and wife as a priority is the supremacy of the creator. Right. The only thing that, that supersedes anything in that marriage is the most high. And so for women, if the man is following the most high's instruction, you should have no damn problem shutting your mouth and follow his instructions. Period. Period. You got an issue how that man want to run this house? You got an issue with the most high. Mm -hmm. okay. Period. You got an issue with Christ. And that's on your head. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Same thing with the with, with brothers. If she's doing all that she can and you feel like she's going off, you need to examine yourself. Because if she's in peace with you, 
she then beca can become your, your pillar of peace. But if she got to do your job and her job, you asking for destruction or you asking for chaos. Like what Elder posted in the chat, you might well go ahead and uh, unscrew that joint. Let, let her show you what to do with it. <laughs> okay. It is what it is. You might well go ahead and unscrew it. Let her put it on. Let, let her show you how to how to instruct that thing. <laughs> Come on, God Himself. So many people play with issues, thoughts, and feelings that cause disunity or division between themselves and their spouse. Clearly not understanding the spiritual, scriptural, spiritual importance of unity. Right. So many single people greatly underestimate the importance of having a God-centered idea of what the purpose for marriage and who creates a marriage. Mm. They instead make the mistake of trying to couple with people for worldly purpose. Say Pleasure. that again. They instead make the mistake of trying to couple with people for worldly purposes, such as a, the simple personal satisfaction of gratification, companionship, social status. So they want to find they want to find couples who think like them, mm -hmm. who disagree with everything about this lifestyle and marriage. They want to find people who can tickle their fancy, mm -hmm. where they can have an agreement <laughs> and try to distort the scriptures on why they feel in some dispensation of time certain things can't happen. Believe it or not, every bit of lifestyle about the Hebrew culture lasted out of captivity and in captivity. How do you think we was multiplying in Egypt? Hmm? Let's talk about it. So we got to understand that this is not about our feelings. And this is what they were saying. Too many people play with issues, thoughts, and feelings which cause disunity or division between themselves and their spouse. Clearly not understanding the spiritual, scriptural importance of unity, which is the blueprint in Genesis 1 and 2. If Genesis 1 and 2 is not your blueprint to a succession on this earth, then there's no point of you being on this earth. Because you're operating outside of purpose and righteousness. Then your whole life is vain. Vanity upon vanities. Vanity upon vanity. That's why Ecclesiastes is going, you working all this time, doing all this, coming to the sun up, wife cooking you dinner, all that. And it's vain because it's not, you're not doing the, the glory up. You're not bringing forth the glory up. Period. So, we'll keep reading it. This is some good parts. Come on, keep going. You have to come to the conclusion for yourself. Based on scripture, and walk with it, settle it in your heart. Ooh, wait, say that again. Read it again. You have to come to the conclusion for yourself. Based on scripture. Based on what? Based on scripture. Based on your thoughts. Based on scripture. Based on your feelings. Scripture. Based on the world. Scripture. Uh -huh. Come on. And walk with it, settle it in your heart. Walk with it. Settle in your heart. So you either accept the volume of the book or you don't accept nothing about the book. Stop playing with the book. There's no such thing as lukewarm lights. You either an Israelite all the way or you're not. You either all the way with the book or you're not. There's no in between here. You can't sit here and sift out what you want to choose and pick. Christians don't even do that. They just threw away the whole Old Testament. They threw away the whole Old Testament. They don't want to deal with it. At least they can be, least they can be honest. They hold doctrine to John 3.16. They can stay for it. As soon as you say something, John 316, that's it. We ain't going nowhere else with it. We're not going to Matthew 5 and 17. We're not going to Revelation 22 and 14. No, we're going to stick with John 3 and 16, and that's it. That's it. I ain't got to do nothing with the Hebrew culture. Although the Hebrew culture is they were a reflection of how they serve y'all. Come on, man. We got to stop playing with y'all like this. You either Israelite or you not by way of your actions towards these instructions. You either crossed all the way over or you didn't. 
If you're in the middle, we know exactly what you're doing. You're drowning. You're going to die slowly. At least if you over there, you got a chance to maybe think about crossing over or going all the way back. But if you're in the middle, you're drowning. You're drowning. A lukewarm life. Ain't no such thing as it. You either all the way in there, you're not, brother or sister. Yeah. A Israel might. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. And walk with you. in your heart. I'm that God you. did this thing. This what? Good. That God did this. Meaning, he placed us together. Neither I nor my spouse did this of our own will. Mm, say what? Nor did this of my own will. So, Mashiach said, let it be your will, not my own. So, if Mashiach said that, why when it comes to how it's supposed to be naturally instructed, we can't? Why do we feel like we actually got a choice? Because that's the ideology of the enemy. Democracy. Yeah, exactly. Democracy. Democracy. This is the democracy. This is the theocracy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Period. When you come into this walk, whatever you thought or whatever you feel you are, it's supposed to die in that water. You supposed every time you read this word, you supposed to be dying. If you read this word and not feeling cut every time you read it, you're not reading it right. You're not reading it right. If you're not reading this with conviction, you are not reading this Bible right. You doing this for leisure. You think this is a fairy tale story. You probably think it's a Harry Potter book. <laughs> Abraham wasn't real, but that life sounds good though. What you could do is you could extract some good from the moral. Yeah. Yeah, you know what some of it, you know the Bible ain't real, but it got some good principles. We find all type of excuses not to submit all the way. We literally are crabs in the barrel. The thing is, the crossing over is getting out the barrel, but we trying to, we, we kind of like pulling up to the barrel, but then we kind of lean back like, what's up, friends? How y'all doing now? I missed y'all. That's how we talk to the spirit to keep us down. I missed y'all. Y'all gave me some comfort. Even though I was miserable, y'all gave me some comfort because I actually know you. Because we don't fully understand this walk, we don't want to go the extra mile to understand it, which will, which will require us to die to ourselves and, and literally wash out everything that we knew to understand. Come on. We must be clear that there is nothing that I could have done to create this marriage. Mm. I did not give myself this husband. Mm. I did not give myself this wife. Mm. And this is a true marriage. We have been together as an idea in the mind of God since before the foundation of the earth. Ooh -wee. In order to do a work for him, since God did this, he will sustain and protect this marriage. So if it's ordained by the most high, all that will shall be. But if you still in question, if you should be with somebody, most likely you probably should. If you still in question, even in the beginning, most likely you should not be with that person. You got to be sold on the thought and, and idea that y'all sent this man or woman. You got to be sold on that thought. If you're not sold on that thought, Guarantee you made it by your own will or why y'all came together. We got to stop tiptoeing. Well, you know, they're a good person and they have some good attributes, but I just don't know. No, you need to know. This Obviously, this was the pur purpose of having a father established house in the beginning to tell you this is it. The Adam question, you know, oh. Did he question when he got eaten? Oh, I don't know. I don't there really know. Other, there was another option. I don't really know if 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 this is the woman for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, she she take another. Yeah, she she <laughs> a little bougie for me. I don't really know. 
sure this is what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to be sold on the idea. Is this the woman for you or not? Let's keep reading. He was sustained to protect this marriage. Neither I nor my husband can destroy what God has put together. It was not my game. My looks, my clever wit, Ooh, oui. my romantic skills Ooh, that oui. put us together. Mm. I was not nor could I ever be in competition with any other person for my oneness with my spouse. Mm. God did this. God did this. How many people can say God did this? The most high did this. I didn't get this person by my looks. I didn't get this person by my money. I didn't get this person by my clothes. I didn't get this person by my position. I got this person because God sent this person. She didn't manipulate herself into a relationship. And she didn't go in there, she didn't go in there blinded either. She put on that Victoria's Secret. Yeah, she knew exactly what she was getting herself into. Let's be honest. A lot of sisters in these marriages don't know the full extent of what they're getting themselves into. And that's because most of the brothers didn't realize what is required in this walk because they did not take the time to learn. They want to be a minister. They want to be king. They want to be a don, a the one. They want to be all these things and not have what's required established before having this day. And yes, your, your, your wife should, re should reference you in all things. In all things. In everything. But with those titles comes some type of tangibility to it. Comes some substance to prove that, that you are a king. You are a don. Right? Come on. Elohim did this. This perfect this uh, perspective recalls his omniscience. Before he had made or formed anything, he planned everything. He alone is God. He what? He alone is God. Come on. It is he who made us, and not we ourselves. Mm -hmm. Psalm one hundred, verse three. Okay. We were together with a calling and purpose. Woo! Say that again. We, we were, were together, together with a what? With a purpose. Oh, a calling. Come on. And a purpose. And a in purpose God. in the mind of who? Of God. No, of the man. Of God. Of the wife. Of God. It said we were together with a calling and a purpose with the mind of Yah. That is one. That is the Godhead. A man and a wife agreeing together. This was what was beautified in the Most High's eyes. If we're not establishing this in the beginning, we might as well not even do a ketubah. We might as well not even think about anything else. If we ain't got this established right here first. A lot of us do first, then think later. We do the do first. Then really think about, is this person for me or not? Right. We don't really examine what we talking about. We don't really consider the cost. Yeah. We don't consider the cost. We don't consider the toxicity around this person, even though we see it. We sitting here trying to figure out how can I change this person rather than she should already be changed before I'm with her. She should know why she here. By way of her father already establishing that she was going to serve her man in this capacity. No matter who the man was, she should already have it in her mind. Whoever her man is, by way of Yahweh, I'm going to serve him. Him being the example and representation of Yah in the flesh. This is what must be established. And with that, I'm going to start right here. We're going to have to do a part three of this. I don't want to go too long on it. So... Let me stop the sharing real quick. Let me stop right here. Mm -hmm. the book. Hmm? Yeah. Right, gonna keep, we're gonna, we're gonna the book. So with that, with that being established, yo, we got any questions? We got any questions, comments?
Any questions or comments on the lesson? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, with that, you know, uh, appreciate everybody who logged in on the live. Uh, pray we gave y'all some edification. Uh, truly on the Hebrew man, how how we must change the narrative. Well, not even change the narrative, get back to the original narrative, how the Hebrew man was supposed to function. So we may establish Yah's righteousness, not our own. Remember, what Yah put together, no man can put asunder. And so we have that established in our heart. We have that established uh, in the natural realm of how he was supposed to function. And then all things that he has made shall be. There's no, you ain't got to force it. You ain't got to push upon it. It'll just come to you. Man and, believe it or not, man and woman, we, men and women are supposed to wait. <laughs> we supposed to wait. We ain't supposed to go get it. We supposed to wait. Think about it. Jacob ran to it. He didn't get it immediately. He had. He also had to work and wait for it. So, brothers, for those who single, take heed to that. Uh, for, for brothers who are already in the marriage, let this be your blueprint on what you need to work towards. You know what I'm saying? With your children, even yourself. You're not there yet. You're not all the way there yet. This is your blueprint on getting it there. So you'll, you'll have that established thing for your children. So with that, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.